Now, the final dimension of globalization that we're going to cover is cultural globalization. And I think this is kind of like the most significant, meaningful form of globalization. And this is actually like how culture gets moved and shifted around the world and how people move around the world and bring their cultures with them, right? Or how they learn a new culture. And so we're really talking about like migration and cultural connected. So like, yeah, how people move around the world. Maybe they uh, were born in one country and then they travel to another country and they set up a life there, right? So like, you know, Sudanese immigrants in Atlanta, right? Or uh, Somali immigrants in Minnesota, right? Hmong, Hmong immigrants in Philadelphia, right? It's this kind of movement of people all over the world, right? Or yeah, it's Tunisian immigrants in England. And, you know, and this is really what we think about when culture, about cultural globalization, that culture itself has kind of become deterioralized, deterioralized, yes, it's not necessarily tied to a territory anymore, because people move and they bring their culture with them, right? So, you know, you could have uh, Indian, Indian food in Belgium, right? Or you could have uh, Thai food in Germany, right? This this idea that culture is only in one fixed place is really not uh, not true anymore, right? P culture and people are removed from the geographic location of origin. <clears throat> and just think about all the different yeah movements of people from diaspora, from the legacy of slavery, from the displacement caused by natural disasters and wars. Right, and it's how it's caused people to move from where they're originally from, right? And then culture gets sort of re-territorialized, so kind of re-established in a new place. So culture and people are relocated and adapted in a new geographic space, and they sort of bring their culture with them. So an example of this would definitely be like the Somalian culture in Minneapolis, right? So they're uh, early on in the 70s, the governor of Minnesota did some uh, some policies that made it really attractive for immigrants to come to Minnesota and they made a home in uh, in Minneapolis, Somalis, uh, during a period of unrest and was it during the 90s? There was lots of starvation and uh, violence in Somalia. So a lot of them became refugees and they uh, went to the U.S. and they settled in Minnesota. So you have this like this like little Somalia in the middle of in the middle of Minnesota, right? And there's all those kinds of little places, right? Or, you know, think about what the Chinese community in San Francisco, right? And they came to work on the railroads, right? And uh and in the next chapter we'll learn sort of how they were like uh, they weren't allowed to live in certain places, and hence the existence of Chinatown, right? They were actually sort of segregated into living in areas that became like Chinatown. And, uh, but yeah, they brought their culture with them. And so they were able to, you know, establish Chinese culture in the U.S. context, right? And these kinds of neighborhoods and cultural places are really an example of cultural globalization and how it impacts, you know, places and spaces and our different neighborhoods, right? So the implications over this, connections to cultural homes are changing multiple homes, yes. So what does it mean to feel at home, right? And what is your home has, has become more complex, right? And, you know, so you could be like, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm culturally uh, Filipino, but I feel at home but my, but, but my home is San Diego, you know, right? Like, and so what is home uh, is, is, can be complicated, especially when it comes to like multiple homes, right? So like maybe you were born in one place, but you came of age in another place, and then you had great experiences in another, and that all of these parts of, of home, all these homes kind of have impacted you and your connections to all these places uh, 
make, make a part of who you are. Maybe you're like, a, you know, you're kind of between cultures, right? The Mexican culture and the American culture or the, uh, you know, the Indian culture and the American culture. Yeah, whatever it is, right? Uh, this is not clear cut anymore, right? Also, diaspora communities are increasing. Yes, yeah, so people are on the move. So there's lots of diasporas, which is sort of mass migrations of a group of people for whatever reason, right? You can talk about the, um, the black diaspora, the, you know, there's uh, Asian diaspora, Jewish diasporas, particularly because of the consequences of the Holocaust. And so lots of peoples are on the move and where, where people start out, where these groups start out and where they end up, uh, they often take their culture with them. And so that, that's sort of how, why culture is not necessarily tied to a given place anymore. And then this leads to multiple cultural identities, cult, third culture kids, right? So they're kind of like, they're neither in one culture or another. They're kind of in a, their own culture or a, a mixture of cultures. Uh, people aren't just one thing, right? You know, you could be uh, Korean and Black and Jamaican and Filipino, right? And how these identities are uh, are complicated, and we can embrace this 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 beauty and, and the ability to be multiple things is uh, really interesting, and I think full of a lot of possibilities. And so this is kind of the background of, of cultural globalization is migration and people uh, moving and establishing different cultural connectives. So cultural connectives is really like how migrants sort of set up cultural networks in different communities. Like, yeah, like, for example, uh, the Chinese in San Francisco.